Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter, and uh, it is Memorial Day, and I'm getting ready to take my kids out to the parade, but first I wanted to show you the hand-painted shirts that we made yesterday, and you will see how to make in this video. Um, here are the ones my kids made. This is the one I made, and I showed you on the video. Here is the one that one of my daughters made. There's the front and the back. Pretty cool. Masking tape and some paper stencils. And then my other daughter made this one. Very similar. And you see you can't mess it up. You know, you spray. If your spray goes here or there, it's still going to look awesome. And the back. That was Maisie's shirt. I think that's pretty fun. And um, my son can't wear a t-shirt in the parade because he has to wear his Class A Cub Scout uniform. So he decided that he wanted to do something different. And he made an Angry Bird shirt. Isn't that fun? And um, I found this stencil. It's a pumpkin carving stencil. And I just searched Angry Bird stencil in Google. And I came up with that. And I just imported it into um, Scaltu. And I traced it and cut it right out. It'd be easy enough to print it and cut it by hand. Um, and... We used stencil brushes and just kind of placed that. We just used regular paper, placed the paper down and stenciled it, and then went ahead and sprayed the uh, spray fabric paint on. So what we're, what we're going to do in the video is I'm going to show you how to use the spray fabric paint. And this is my spray fabric paint that I got from Oriental Trading. And I got this set for $8. And um, you get a, uh, I think this is about four ounce, yeah, four ounce bottle, and um, it sprays really well, but I will tell you, you need to clean it when you're done or it's going to be clogged, and um, I just took it apart and then rinsed it under warm water and just sprayed it. You want to use warm or cool. I used hot to clean out this one, and I think it made, it messed up my mechanism and it's not spraying right now, so use cool water. Um, I will tell you that this can be hard to spray, especially as you go on and it gets kind of clogged up. Um, for the little, little kids, if you spray slowly, you get more of like a spatter like this. And if you spray quick, you get more of a, um, a fine mist. So keep that in mind. And if you want to make your own, you can just mix acrylic paint and water in a spray bottle. But I would get the kind to have the trigger, like kind of like a window cleaning bottle with, with a trigger. I think that would be easier uh, to take the paint up through the nozzle than the, the push down kind on the top. It would just be easier for little hands to maneuver. All right, so I want to show you the uh, shoes that we made to go along with it. Um, I show you these in the video. This is the one I made. This is the one my daughter made. And um, her stars came out better. I'm going to put it up a little bit closer. I sprayed a little too heavy when I um, did the first, the demonstration one. And my paint kind of leaked under the star stencil. Um, so here with a light touch, it worked a lot better. And um, it did take a while to mask it off. And I think I would just give them some paint pens or some Sharpies to decorate their shoes next time. And when I was at Walmart yesterday buying these, I could only find one pair of white canvas sneakers. So I got a pair of black ones and I let my daughter, my other daughter use um, these paint pens from Tulip. I got them like 99 cents a package at Martin's. So they're probably a little bit more than that normally, but they go a long way and they're kind of fun for the kids to use. And you just take the cap off and draw, squeeze and draw like you would with a marker. So that was really fun. And you just get kind of more of a punky look and they're opaque so they showed up on the black which is kind of cool but I have to say that when you have twins or probably even just sisters if you get them different things they're both gonna feel jilted which they did but they got over it and made their fabulous shoes to go with their fabulous shirts now if you want to know how to make them then just keep on watching because I'm gonna show you how okay we are going to make some really cool t-shirts today and um, altered shoes it's a lot of fun um, here I have a, just a plain old white t-shirt of mine that I have spray stenciled and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute but first I want to show you how to alter a plain white canvas shoe so the first thing you'll want to do is to get some masking tape and we're going to mask off the section we're not ready to use yet we're not ready to work on you also want to make sure you take your laces out right away um, so that you don't get paint on them. We're going to be using um, spray paint, a spray fabric paint. You can actually use acrylic spray paint, or you can use fabric dye in a spray bottle, or you can use acrylic paint and water in a spray bottle. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a permanent paint. And press down the tape to make sure that it's stuck really well. Okay, and I didn't want any paint going into my shoe, so I've got that filled up there too. 
All right, now I use my die cutting machine to cut some stars out of contact paper. And I'm just gonna put some of those on the shoe. And I'm gonna do blue and white stars on the toe and on the heel of the shoe. So I'm gonna start with a one of the larger stars in the front. And I'm gonna put a couple, one on each side of it. I find that simpler designs will work better on something like this, where you have such a small area. It'll also have a lot more impact, be a lot more graphic. And then on the heel, I'm going to do a star on each side. You could also use stars from the, uh, stickers from the dollar store, like those little, um, you know, gold stars that teachers give out to kids. Any stickers will be fine. You could even cut it out of paper um, and put a little glue stick on it or something to stick it down if you didn't have contact paper. But contact paper is really fun and easy to work with. It's great for stencils. Now I've got some, um, this is actually fabric spray paint. It's from Oriental Trading and um, I was on there a couple weeks ago when I bought the stuff to make my stain daubers and they had a set of six colors and um, all in the spray bottles and everything, it was like eight bucks. So I mean, it would have cost me six dollars just to buy the empty spray bottle. So I decided to go ahead and try these and they're really a lot of fun to work with. So you give them a shake and then um, generally, if, if, if I was working on the kitchen table, I'd protect it, but this is my you know craft table. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray. And you can spray it so you have solid color or you can um, leave it kind of tie dyed looking. This is really solid. I did a little bit more tie-dyed looking on the t-shirt. And do the heel too. You can see where I really masked it off, masked it off because it would have made a mess. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm actually preparing the craft to do with my kids. Um, so they'll be able to do that when they get home. Alright, now I gotta let this dry before I try to pull, peel off the tape and the stars, or I am going to end up smearing it all over the place. So let me just set that aside. Wipe up my mess, then we'll go back to the t-shirt that I was working on earlier. Um, now if you've ever followed my blog and you've seen me do any kids projects, you know my motto, ABT, no, ABP, always be prepared when you're working with kids because um, in the time that you are setting up a project, if they are bored and they are hanging around, they are going to get into trouble, they're going to get into messes, and um, they're going to get frustrated, and you'll get frustrated too, and it's just not worth it. So always make sure you are ready before your kids come to the craft room or the craft table with you. All right, so I obviously am not ready because I need something to put inside the shirt, so I'll be back in a moment. Anytime you're working with fabric, you want to make sure you have something that you can put your um, put inside of a shirt. It just keeps your ink from seeping through. So I have this just old piece of paneling, and I'm going to stick that right in my t-shirt. A piece of cardboard would be perfect, but I went to my recycling bin and I didn't have any. The recycling man came this week, so I'm just going to use this old panel of plywood, and it will work just fine. Um, now. I used the star stickers on the front of the shirt, but I wanted to do something different from the back, on the back. So what I have done is I saved this uh, this star design. It was actually something I cut out for the Boy Scouts. They wanted a bunch of uh, sheriff stars for a den meeting. And so I had cut out a bunch of my Cricut and I saved the uh, leftover spots because I thought it looked really cool. So what I'm going to do is just simply miss that with a little blue spray paint. But before I do that, I want to get my, star, my stripe area done. So I am simply going to use some tape, and since this is an adult shirt, I'm going to use the uh, wider two-inch masking tape. Painter's tape would work. I won't get anything too sticky. Duct tape would be overkill. My tape isn't cooperating. Go figure. Things not going smoothly on one of my videos. Now there's a shocker. And I'm just going to loosely tape a few pieces down. It's kind of cool if you do get some wrinkles. I might put some wrinkles in on purpose because it gives it a really cool kind of tie-dye effect. So I'm gonna put a few wrinkles on there on purpose just to give that neat look. You can reuse, if you're making a bunch of these, you could actually save the tape from shirt to shirt and just reuse it. Save having to tear it every time. The, tape, the uh, paint on the tape will take longer to dry though, so just be aware of that. Get those 
wrinkles taped in because I think it looks kind of neat. But if you want it more perfect, you can do it more perfect. It's completely up to you. These fabric things are fun. You could use them for so many different motifs. It'd be a really fun birthday party craft. All right, give it a good press. I'm gonna go in with my blue. And I'm gonna refill these bottles once they run out. I'm wondering, it might be prudent to um, actually clean the nozzles in between uses if you're gonna be storing them for a while. I think I'll probably um, kind of put this under hot water and spray out a little clean, uh, clean water just to make sure the nozzles don't get clogged on me. Since this is the first time I've used these, I want to make sure they stay in good working order. I still have a lot of paint in here. I've done the front and back of a shirt and part of a sneaker and it's still, still lots of paint, so that's encouraging. I'm going to go over the bottom of the shirt. hope everything's in frame here. I think it is. So I went to Walmart this morning and I got some white canvas sneakers, which were not as easy to find as I thought they would be. And I got a package of three um, boys large youth t-shirts. So the kids will be able to make their own t-shirts. We're going to be marching in the Memorial Day Parade tomorrow, so that's kind of exciting. Um, but I wanted to make sure they had something festive to wear. Mostly the girls. Jackson will have his Cub Scout uniform on, but I wanted to make sure the girls had something fun. Alright, now normally you probably wait for this to dry so you don't get ink all over your fingers, but as you know, I'm not normal and I'm going to go ahead and remove everything. We take off the tape and we have this awesome little voila type of moment. Eh, I got it all in my hands. Look at that. Another surprise. It's such a really fun idea and it's also really cool if you do like um, vacations at amusement parks you can make your kids um, matching shirts or they can make them themselves because it's so easy but then you can spot them because nobody's going to have a shirt just like yours and you'll be able to spot them in an instant when you're out at a theme park so there's the back of the shirt i think it looks awesome and um, maybe i can flip it around and show you the front again without getting into my paint that i've just sprayed but there's the front of the shirt you know what maybe i'll actually put it on and you can see it once we get all of our all of our shirts done. Okay, I'm, I have um, let the blue paint dry and I'm going to show you how to do some fine red stripes on the side of your shoe. And what I did is I used um, some waxed paper and I took my trusty painter's tape, which I use for everything, and I stuck some on my wax paper and then I used my paper trimmer to trim these really fine lines. So then all I have to do is just peel them off the wax paper and I've got my masks for these stripes part of my um, 4th of July flag shoes. See, this is kind of timely. You can make them now and use them for Memorial Day or 4th of July or Labor Day or just because you're patriotic and you love the design. Um, and I love that it's so simple and it's so graphic and it's so easy to recognize. Um, it's just, it's just fun and it's a fun project you can do with your kids, you could do with your scout groups, um, in your classrooms or just with your own children. It's really really fun in fact I'm doing this all before my girls get home from their play date because I want to um, make sure that I've got all my supplies ready and I'll be all set for when they come to craft with me because um, it's always easier to craft with kids when you are prepared now uh, I remember before the um, when I was first starting off this video which I'm filming in installments so things can dry um, I mentioned that you can use any type of permanent paint for this project. Um, you can get acrylic spray paint, which would work great. Just um, don't use oil-based spray paint. I am afraid that when you go to dry that in your dryer, it may combust. So stick to the acrylic-based permanent paints. Um, now, another fun thing to do with these canvas sneakers would be to use your Sharpie pens to embellish them. That way you wouldn't have to mask anything and the kids could get really creative with their designs. So, you know, after all this masking, that's for the birds. I would, um, next time I would just give the kids some markers and let them go to town with the permanent markers because that would work so well. I think it'd be really cool, um, and I saw a pair of sneakers like this on Pinterest, to do, to paint the sneakers red and then put watermelon seeds, just pay, make black spots and then do like the sole green. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, uh, that's my next project. And I'm just going to stuff the rest of this inside so I don't get paint all over the inside of the shoe. And um, you could use newspaper, but since I have that handy, I'm just going to use that. 
Okay, and maybe just for safety's sake, I'll take a little bit of this scrap masking tape and um, go right over the top here. Hopefully my spray paint won't get that wild, but just in case, I want to be prepared. Yeah, I'll stick a little bit more there. Prepared, I really should look into what that word actually means. Okay, so I got my red paint. And I can clean this up with a Sharpie later, too, if I want to, if I've gotten some errant paint here and there. Honestly, I'm really not too worried about it. It's a fun project. It's not, you know, going to hang in a museum. It's fun. It's, you know, my kids will probably make mud pies in these later and have them all muddy, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Okay. Now, I know this is wet, but I still think I could go ahead and take the stuff off, take the tape off so you can see what it looks like. Plus, my camcorder is warning me that the battery's low, so let's just uh, go on with the program here. And I'm only doing one of these sneakers because I know my daughter is going to want to do the other one herself. So I'm just very gingerly taking off this tape, trying not to get my inky fingers all over everything. Let me go grab a baby wipe, actually. Wipe my hands off a little bit. I make such a mess. This is why I can't craft at the kitchen table because my fam poor family would die of food poisoning probably from all the art materials, residual art materials that would be left behind. So, you know, I recommend you letting it dry if you're doing this at home. If you're following along at home, let it dry before you attempt peeling off the uh, tape and stickers and what have you. In fact, I think that permanent markers are probably the way to go if you're working on sneakers. Oh, and some of my paint seeped under. We're going to have to go over that little white paint, I think. Mm -hmm. 